Hello everyone. In the last video, we saw the idea behind normalizing flows and we also implemented a very simple normalizing flow for one variable. In this video, we will learn how to compose multiple normalizing flows. But before that, let's quickly review what normalizing flows are again. If you have a variable x with an unknown probability distribution, and you transform it using a function f to z then the relationship between p of x and p of z is given by this expression which can also be written as log p of x is equal to log p of z plus log of the absolute value of dz by dx so how can we use this relationship to learn the probability distribution of x? What we can do is we can maximize the log likelihood of x which is the same as maximizing the log likelihood of p of z plus the log of the absolute value of this derivative. So how do we maximize this expression? Basically, what we want to know is how to evaluate these two terms. Now, this term dz by dx is the model that we want to train and we can maximize this by doing gradient descent. But what about p of z? We don't know the distribution of p of z. So we define p of z to have a uniform distribution which gives us a way to evaluate this probability density. Thus, we can maximize this sum of log of p of z plus log of dz by dx and this will maximize the log likelihood of x and thus we will have learned what the probability distribution of x is. But now what we can do is instead of having just one transformation from x to z, we can have multiple transformations for example here you can see x gets transformed into z1 which then gets transformed into z2 by the function f2 which then gets transformed into z by the function f3. So we can ask the same question again. What is the relationship between the probability density of x and the probability density of z? So let's find out. So what we can do is, using the expression we just saw a couple of minutes ago, we can write down the relationships between x and z1, z1 and z2, and z2 and z. Now all we have to do is substitute this value in this equation which gives us this. And we can substitute the value of z1 in the top equation which gives us this expression and this is the expression that gives us the relationship between p of x and p of z and we can generalize this to any number of transformations so if we have n transformations in sequence and the output is z then p of x is equal to p of z times the product of absolute values of derivatives of the transforming functions and again, we can take log on both sides, which gives us this equation at the bottom. Log p of x is equal to log p of z plus the sum of log of absolute values of derivatives of the transforming functions. And this equation is the key idea behind how to compose multiple flows. Also, I would like to remind again that all these functions fi have to be invertible or bijective and in the last video we used one particular class of invertible functions called the CDFs and we will be using them again but there is one issue with using a CDF continuously on all the transformations let's look into it so if we have a variable x and if we use a CDF to transform it into z1 then z1 will lie 
in the range 0 to 1, whereas x can be anything on the real number line. So what we would like to do is use another function f2 which maps z1 back to the entire real number line and then we can apply another CDF which maps it back to 0, 1 and so on. So we don't know what this function f2 is and how does it map a function from 0, 1 to minus infinity to infinity. So the function we'll be using here is called logit transform and this function is parameterized by a variable alpha and here you can see how it varies for different values of alpha. Now let's take a look at the formula for logit transform. The formula is quite straightforward. It is simply a logit of x which has been scaled and shifted by values which depend on alpha where logit is defined as log of x by 1 minus x which is nothing but the inverse of sigmoid function. So when alpha is equal to 0, this function is the same as inverse of sigmoid function and as the value of alpha approaches 1, this function approaches a constant 0. Now, if we have a logit transform mapping of a variable x to y, we would like to know the relationship between the probability densities of x and y. And let's find out using this equation again. So here, we would like to evaluate what d of fx by dx is. We can write down f of x in two steps. The first equation defines f as a function of x affine. And the second equation defines x affine as a function of x. So we can use the chain rule to evaluate the expression d of x by dx, which is nothing but d of f by d of x affine times d of x affine times dx, which as you can see is equal to 1 minus alpha divided by x of affine times 1 minus x of affine. We can take log on both sides which gives us this expression and thus we can get a relationship between p of x and p of y. So this is what the entire flow looks like. We start with the variable x whose values can be anywhere in between minus infinity and plus infinity and then we map it using a CDF which gives us a variable z1 which falls between 0 and 1 and then we map it back to the entire real line using a logit function which gives us z2 and then we use a CDF again and so on. And in the end, we would like the output, the final output to have a uniform distribution. And then we can apply this formula and maximize the expression on the right hand side which will also maximize the log likelihood of x. Now let's implement what we just saw. Just like the last video, we can divide the implementation into three different components. The first component will deal with the data pipeline. Here we will again be using a mixture of Gaussians where we will have three Gaussians at three different points with three different variances. create a data pipeline using the standard PyTorch dataset API and then create a dataset of 2000 values for training set and 1000 values for testing set. We use a batch size of 128 Now let's take a look at what the model looks like. As we just saw the model is a sequence of alternating transformations of CDF and logit. Before we dive into the implementation, let's fully understand what the flow looks like. 
So we pass x to a CDF transform, which gives us z1, and also the log of d of z1 by dx. And then we pass z1 to a logit transform, which gives us z2, and log of dz2 by dx, and so on. And in the end, we'll get a variable zn, which is our output, and the log of the derivative of the last transformation function. And what we would like to do is, we would like to add up all these expressions, which would be equal to log of p of x. Let's see how a CDF is implemented. We covered the implementation in the last video, so I would not go into details of implementation here, but feel free to pause the video and take a look at this if you want to go into the details. Let's take a longer look on how to implement the logit transform. The logit transform does not have any parameters. It has one parameter alpha, but it's not learnable. We fix the value of alpha to be 0.1. And what we want to do is we want to implement these equations, which we saw a few slides ago. So if you look closely, you can see that these two lines are implementing these two equations. And the third line is basically an implementation of this equation. And in the end, the function returns z and log of dz by dx. What we have here is a list of CDF and logit transforms. And we can store this entire sequence of transforms in the form of a list, in a module list to be more particular. And then we can use the items in this list to transform the variables like so and creating a module list is pretty straightforward all you have to do is define an array where each object is a flow and then you can create a flow composable 1d object implementing the loss function is very straightforward here our target distribution is uniform and we simply calculate the negative log likelihood, which is our loss function. The implementation of the training and testing pipeline is very standard, so I would not go into details here. But again, feel free to pause the video if you want to have a detailed look. Now let's take a look at the results after the training is over. So this is what the learned probability distribution looks like. And let's compare this to the actual distribution of our training and testing data. And as you can see here, the model has learned the distribution of the actual data. It's very close. The link to the code for this video is in the description below. Thank you all for watching.